I told you, I told you, man. CX2 is tech. Tech is definitely coming back. There's no two ways about it. This video finally proves with the latest episode, this dude right here, this is tech in assassin form. I've been making videos for weeks now trying to convince you guys, and we're going to talk about those later on too. But in the latest episode, did you notice something? Please tell me. Did you notice the assassin said this? Lock down the town. Search every domicile until you find her. Search every domicile. You know who says domicile? Nobody else in the galaxy except for tech. Everybody would say check each and every home or something like that. Even Vader has deleted scenes of him saying, I want every household checked throughout the system, but not domicile. Domicile is something that tech would definitely say. And I'm so happy that, you know, we're going to have a crisis by the end of, of this series where we have about four episodes left. I don't think it's going to be revealed up until the second to the last episode, I think. And then by the finale, we're going to have you now the conclusion and the multitude, multitude of other instances where I've seen a lot of tech behavior that is just, you know, uncanny. This guy has to be tech, which leaves us with, of course, it is not Commander Cody. And if it's not Commander Cody under there, then where the hell again is Commander Cody? I made a video about this too, where I don't know why did they drop the whole Cody storyline? He's just out of Star Wars right now. And I can't wait for him to be back in some capacity for us to know what's actually happening. Did he actually went a wall and escaped? Or is he an assassin? Perhaps another assassin. Another hint during the episode, of course, was when Omega took the glasses and her doll out of Marauder. Now that we know the Marauder rip, it is destroyed. Do we know why she did that retrospectively looking at it? But, you know, another hint of tech. And yet tech made it in here, made it in this episode and on the island. He almost had a chance to see those glasses firsthand. But if you're still, still not convinced, the episode gave us more, believe it or not, more evidence that CX2, the assassin, is tech. Outside of the domicile hint, let's talk about Figanoa's ship. Because if you remember, he made it inside that ship and he certainly knew uh, his way around Fee's ship and its controls. They are even able to handle things when they trigger an alarm on it. So then it's reasonable to assume that CX-2 is tech because who was most closest to Fee? Yes, that was tech. This is such a huge hint. I don't know if you guys realize all of these that I showed you in the latest episode and in previous episodes are just compiling evidence that CX2 in the end will remove his mask and it will be tech under there. If you're still not convinced, here's what I presented earlier during the weeks. Remember the first shadow agent? He was trying to assassinate the senators, forming a meeting against Palpatine. Rex was protecting them, but that Imperial agent did not have the earpiece, the visor piece that we see on clones, and more specifically, tech. You can see that the first Imperial agent only had his helmet, while the second one definitely has that earpiece. But of course, there's much more evidence, so let me go through them. While the first Imperial agent's face does get revealed, and it's a standard clone with a standard haircut, the second Imperial agent does not get his face revealed. He is covered by his mask at all times. Even when fighting Crosshair at the end, even when falling down the waterfall, he never, we never see his face. Furthermore, on Tantus, not only are most clones experimented on, but we, but we know that. Crosshair himself was tortured in order to be brainwashed by Hemlock into becoming one of these Imperial agents. Alas, we find out that Crosshair was too defective for that. He says it himself that he was always a defective clone and they could never turn him to become a robot-like creature to be activated whenever the Empire wanted. This is similar to the MK Ultra experiments where in actuality they wanted to do that. So it seems like the Empire is moving down that path too. So we know that one defective clone, one Bad Batch member, was not able to be turned, 
But what about tech? You see, the death of tech is very suspicious. First of all, yes, tech did fall from a high altitude. However, in Star Wars, there's a rule that if we don't see a corpse dead, a grave, then you're probably not dead. And what did we see with tech? He just fell into the mist, into the clouds, and we never saw his body. We never got a confirmed death. Therefore, I really suspect that tech is alive, but not not well, unfortunately, because he was scooped up by the Empire, transported to Tantis into the hands of Hemlock, where he underwent the same experiments Crosshair did. However, Tech, due to his life or death situation, he was probably extremely injured and they were able to revive him. His weakened state might have given him reason to succumb to the dark side, essentially, to the experiments of Hamlock. So my first proof was that we saw the first Imperial agent face, we didn't see the second one. Then, the second one has an earpiece similar to Tech. The third part of the evidence is, of course, that I don't think Tech is dead, I don't think anybody thinks Tech is dead, and he was probably transported to Tantis and created into an Imperial agent, but I I have more evidence, believe it or not, and this one, I think, really takes the cake. I think this last piece of evidence that I saw with my very eyes, and I'm gonna mention it right here, and I'm gonna put that clip in this video so it can be confirmed by you as well, is the moment this Imperial agent locates the clone base and takes a glimpse at Omega from afar. Not only does he react very peculiar, but interestingly enough, he also goes outside of the base talks to his superior to let them know about Omega, but when they ask, are you sure that is Omega, this is his response. Is it confirmed? It's her. She's with a group of rogue clowns. Given that this Imperial agent singled out Omega out of them all, and calling the Bad Batch rogue clones also means that he is personally attached to this group, and he is extremely sure, as he said himself, that that is Omega. Now, how would he know this by just watching an image or going through the bounty list? Even in the end, his hard-headedness, he doesn't listen to Commander Wolf. He is, of course, one of the Bad Batch, a defective clone that doesn't go by ranking, doesn't go by status, he goes by himself. And what's most important out of them all, he doesn't die at the end, even after fighting Crosshair. And you can clearly see that he has something personal with Crosshair too. He still lives in the end, meaning that we will see him again. Star Wars, Dave Filoni, they don't do things just by accident. This Imperial agent is more important than the others. This is why, in the end, when he removes his mask, the Imperial agent will be revealed to be Tech, who has survived but unfortunately has gone way into the dark side. He is now completely an Imperial tool, and it will probably take echo levels of deprogramming to get him back into their midst, or perhaps they will need to kill him. Somebody needs to be sacrificed. Now, I saw some speculation also that this shadow agent might be somebody we never expected, actually, and that is Commander Cody. Because of this episode, featuring so many nostalgia characters like Captain Rex, like Commander Wolf, why not Commander Cody too? The second shadow agent or Imperial agent definitely seemed to take things more personally this time around. He was familiar with the clones, he seemed kind of more after Rex and after Crosshair, and the fans that are actually pointing this out might not be wrong because of his skills with a knife, with clone knives. We saw Commander Cody was very skilled in Season 2 with with a knife, and this trooper was, was also the same, so this could be some sort of a hint. Not that other clones are not trained with a knife, this seemed more like a callback, like an easter egg. So who knows, this might be Commander Cody too, and it would kind of make sense since Cody's been gone for longer and he would have had more time to be conditioned if he was actually caught after escaping, then he would definitely be marked for reprogramming, aka sent to tent with Hemlock, he would probably have been already better physically trained than Tech at this point, and as we can see in the episode, he spoke very, very little. This Imperial agent or Shadow agent, whatever you want to call him, this was definitely done intentionally. What do you guys think also? Talk to me down below in the comments.